So that that was 15 years ago. 15 years ago, because how long has the organization been going? We were founded in 1989. So, you know, before Social Enterprise had a name, we were founded, and we, from the very beginning, we had a business. Because sales create jobs, ultimately. And that's what we're about, is creating employment so that we can teach women skills to move into the industry. Hired her for a, a temporary job for six to nine months, and she works within our food manufacturing business and learns the skills that she needs to move to me. We hire them and we help them become great employees, and once they become great employees, it's time for them to go off and become someone else's great employee. Hi, it's Kathy Wong, your host and producer of Crazy Dreamers TV. And I'm here in Edinburgh, Scotland at the World Social Enterprise Conference. It's day two and I've been meeting so many incredible social entrepreneurs. And today we're very, very lucky to have another incredible woman. Her name is Tamara Ryan and her project is the Women's Bean Project. And we're going to have a chat to her and learn more about her awesome, awesome project. Welcome, Thank Tamara. you. How are you? <laughs> great. It's great to be here. Oh, it's wonderful to have you on me. And you're the first person I've met from Denver, Colorado here at this conference. There's been so many different, uh, you know, countries covered. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. There are about a dozen of mm. us from the oh, US really? and six of us are from Colorado. Oh, wow. Because I've met Canadians, I think, have the a biggest representation. Yes. And then we've got the New Zealanders and uh -huh. then 59 Australians. Yeah, so that's pretty proud impressive. of that. Yeah. <laughs> So look, we'd like to start off by learning a little bit about, you know, the people we're talking to. So tell us a little bit about your background and how, you know, how you came to be a crazy dreamer like the rest of us in wanting this world that, you know, mm -hmm. is a world where business can do good. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I, I did two science degrees, so I, okay. uh, then I became a marketing and business development person in the private sector. And, Initially, I began volunteering at Women's Bean Project because I loved the business model. I loved this idea that there was a business and the better the business did, the more women could be served. Mm -hmm. And I did that for about six months and the position of CEO came open. And I knew the perfect candidate and that was my friend, Sarah. And oh. I tried to talk her into applying for the job and apparently I went on and on about what a great place it was and the impact it had until finally she said, if you think it's so great, why don't you do it? <laughs> Oh, really? So that okay. was 15 years ago. 15 years yes. ago, because how long has the organization been going? We were founded in 1989. Wow. So, you know, before Social Enterprise had a name, we were yeah. founded, and we, from the very beginning, we had a business. Yeah, so that would have been quite, uh, you know, quite pioneering, right? Yes. Back then. Yeah. We got a lot of attention early on because yeah. of the novelty of what we did. Yes. And I would say also because there, we were navigating our own way, uh, there was much more emphasis on the mission than the business, and uh, as as we've evolved, and as I, after I became CEO, we really had to begin to focus on making the business stronger because sales create jobs ultimately, and that's what we're about is creating employment so that we can teach women skills to move into mainstream employment. Yeah, it's interesting how you talked about where you started and then how you know over the years, well, when you took over, right? you were then given the task of looking at how to create a more sustainable uh, model, exactly. right? Yeah. But uh, a lot of businesses I know have started that way. So tell us a little bit more about how you help these women and who are these women sure. that you're helping? Well, we hire women who've been chronically unemployed. And so what that looks like is typically she hasn't had a job longer than a year in her lifetime, though the average age is 38. So it's long histories of addiction and incarceration and homelessness and domestic violence and what we call barriers to employment. And that can look like a lot of different things. Then we hire her for a, a temporary job for six to nine months and she works within our food manufacturing business and learns the skills that she needs to move to mainstream employment. Okay, because you began selling soup, right? Like, yeah. were you doing That's like where a our soup name comes kitchen? From. It's a, no, it, no? Um, a bean soup mix. So our very okay. first product, 29 years ago, was a 10 mm -hmm. bean soup mix. And it has the beans? beans. You know, our founder yeah. uh, saw women at a homeless shelter and she saw that they were caught in this cycle 
where they'd use the services of the shelter for a period of time, and then they'd leave because they'd get a job, but they kept coming back over and over again. So she noticed that a lot of her friends were eating bean soup. It was not scientific <laughs> at all. Okay. And um, she yeah. invested $500 of her own money and put two women to work making 10 bean soup. And that was the beginning. Wow, that's just how it grew. Yes. But now you're doing much more than just uh, bean soup? Now we have diff six different kinds of bean soup, but we also have baking mixes, cookie mixes, and brownies, and cornbread. And then we also have coffee and chocolate-covered espresso beans, you know, bean theme, yeah, and, wow. uh, and spices, and yes. instant and meals. Wow, that's quite a range. And is it, how is it sold and distributed? We are in about a thousand stores across the U.S. and then, of course, online. We have pretty broad distribution online. So we're in about 40 states in the U.S. 40 out of the 50 states, and and you know, for us, it's about always about increasing distribution. Yes. Everything is made in Denver, Colorado, and shipped from our location. Fantastic. And how many women would you be employing? In a year, we employ yeah. about 70. Yeah, that's fabulous. Yeah, so it's really a revolving door because mm -hmm. as new women are coming, uh, those who have already finished the program are departing. Yes. And how do you actually find, how do the women find you or you find them? And how do you select them? Well, one advantage to having been around for 29 years mm -hmm. is that we, we, most of our referrals come from someone else who's been in the program. Unfortunately, though, sometimes that's really a reflection of intergenerational poverty where we'll have a woman and her cousin and her aunt and her sister and her mother. We've served three generations of the same family. Wow. Um, and frankly, I don't think that should be okay. You yeah. know, I go to work every day thinking about how to put ourselves out of business. Mm -hmm. Because I, I fear that if we don't think, think of our work in that way, in 20 years we'll just be serving the daughters of the women we serve yeah. today. And yeah. I don't think that should be okay. No, I think no. we should have to do something crazy like hire men or you know, move to another city or something. Yeah. <laughs> wow, and uh, you know, th yeah, that's just incredible. What has been the biggest challenge for you in the business? Well, honestly, the hardest part of what we do is that we are running a food manufacturing business that is highly regulated, mm -hmm. and we are also hiring people who no one else will hire. And we hire them, and we help them become great employees, and once they become great employees, it's time for them to go off and become someone else's great employee. Yeah. And so that notion of being a transitional employer makes it very challenging to run, a, you know, run a, an efficient business. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. But it's kind of like a nice problem to have, though, too, exactly. at the same time, right? You know, it's so yeah, rewarding it's... to have relief. Yeah. And at the same time, know that we're starting, you know, we're always starting again. Yes. And there are some great things about that, that renewal and, you know, how fresh everything always is. And we have to be great at training and great at onboarding employees mm -hmm. and then great at helping them launch. Yes, that's right. Wow. And do you, well, I mean, what's the next steps for, you, for your organization? What, what are you finding now? Are you adding more products? Are you, what's, mm -hmm. you know, what's, what's the next crazy yeah. dream for the organization? Well, I, it is, you yeah. know, ultimately, sales create jobs. So we are a very sales-driven organization, and we're looking hard at what's happening in the food world how people eat has changed since 1989. Mm -hmm. And so we're very focused on products that are much more contemporary. So we've introduced some instant beans and rice in a cup, and we'll be doing some other uh, new products that, are, that are, have more interesting flavors and are just much more about how Americans eat today. Yes. And so that's on the business side, and of course increasing our distribution. Our grocery business doubled in the past year, so we'll look at continuing to grow that's that. fabulous. And, and then, of course, all of that is so that we can impact more women. What do you attribute that? I mean, that's huge growth. What mm -hmm. do you attribute that growth to? A lot of it is um, becoming much more... Um, so one of the challenges I think that social enterprises have is that it's hard to to appeal to large companies because it's really hard to take your little idea and and have it ready for you know prime time for mass distribution and so we've focused a lot on running a great business and getting higher levels of food safety certification so that the large grocers will pay attention to us um, and we focused on large grocery chains because um, that one to many 
approach yes. from a marketing standpoint is so it, it, that's more scalable much more traction yes exactly, exactly than a one-to-one yeah, -one. yeah. Um, and do you plan to go outside of America well we certainly so there it's mm -hmm. interesting with food because there are you know regulations as we ship to and other countries, countries and yeah and like, tariffs and yeah. things like that and so we've not in, we've rather intentionally not done that to date what we're focused on instead is what is it about our model that is transferable? Mm -hmm. um, because when someone approaches us and says, you know, how do you do what you do? They don't really mean how do you make bean soup. What they mean is how do you combine this human services organization with a manufacturing business? And so that's what we're focused on is how, how would that be replicated? Mm -hmm. and, and regardless of what you make. I yes. think on some level, you know, we've found a consumable product that has relatively low cost of goods. You know, it's a commodity. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's worked well for us. But I do think that there are many different kinds of businesses that one could do and still apply this model. Yeah, and I like the fact that um, I was speaking to um, Dopper, which make a water bottle um, mm -hmm. uh, last week. And he was saying what was key in their business is understanding your gross profit margins. And he yeah. was saying that when he first started, there wasn't enough gross profit margin for their uh, product, mm -hmm. so they needed to change that. And that was um, he was saying that that was really pivotal, pivotal, yeah. you know, in their business um, growing and how that that was the tip that he shared. So on that note, what is a tip that you could share with our community for those you know wanting to get into the space and start a social enterprise themselves? One of the things that's most fascinating to me about this space is that there is a tension that exists between the business and the mission and it, it exists every day in many different ways and I think what 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 is required to be successful is to be comfortable with that tension and understand that perhaps today the business will win and tomorrow the mission will win and that your job as a leader is to figure out how to balance that and always be, you know, be trying to sit with the tension and yet at the same time make sure that you, it, it doesn't tip too far in either direction. I really like the way you've uh, used that metaphor because it, it is, I know with my own business, it's a constant battle. You yeah. talk to everybody mm -hmm. else, you know, that's been here mm -hmm. too at the conference and it's the same conversations we're all having. Yes. Yeah. But uh, I suppose, you know, when you're very clear though on that mission and focused mm -hmm. on it, that's obviously key, right? It is. You know, it, as well. I think it's yeah. um, it's understanding that, you know, for us, we don't exist to make bean soup, mm -hmm. and yet we can't exist without it. That um, it is the means through which we pay the women a wage. It's the 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 way that we support our our company, and yet none of that matters if we're not delivering on the mission. And so that again, that trying to balance those two things understanding that one cannot exist without the other and they really have to be you know interwoven to yes. our culture and everyone you know all of our staff must come to work every day thinking about that yeah no that's beautiful well look thank you so much yeah. for your time i mean that's just so many pearls of wisdom and i look forward to hearing where you go next you know and seeing thank you. more i mean maybe one day we'll see your product in australia who you, knows it could be <laughs> thanks so thank much you. Tamara. So that's been another episode, guys, of Crazy Dreamers, and uh, I really love the piece that Tamara mentioned around this tension, you know, between mission and obviously the sustainability piece. But you know, by understanding that tension and being comfortable, I think that's a real. That's my takeaway, anyway, from this episode. So until we meet again, be well and dream crazy, guys. Bye. Crazy dreamers.